Okay, this is gonna be a quick one. As it is an extension of the original problem subsets. I am talking about the problem subsets 2 on lead code. You are given an array of integers and you have to find out all the possible unique subsets. But this time, this array could have duplicates as well. You may notice that this problem is very very similar to the original problem. So if you have not solved that first, I would recommend you to stop this video right over here and I would highly highly recommend to check out that original problem first. You can find the link in the description below. As per this problem, you need to make sure that you are removing all the duplicates. So let's see how we can go about doing that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore the life of technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I'm gonna explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see how this problem is different from the original one and how do you get rid of those duplicates. We will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this is actually working. This way you are never gonna forget it. So without further ado, let's get started. Let us quickly try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. You are given an array of integers that may have duplicates. This duplicates is a very important term over here. And given this array, you have to return all the possible subsets. That is the power set, right? And you have to make sure that your answer should not have any duplicate subsets, right? This is the problem statement. So let us look at a sample test case. One of the test cases, I have an array 1, 2, 2, right? And these are all the possible unique subsets that you can form from this original array, right? You might wonder, what do the duplicates look like? So, for example, if I get an array like 2, 1, 2, or if I get 2, 2, 1, or if I get 2, comma 1. Now, these all are duplicates. You can see that 2, comma 1 is a duplicate of 1, comma 2. And 2, 1, 2 and 2, 2, 1 are duplicates of 1, 2, 2, right? So, your answer cannot have these subsets, correct? So, given this array, you have to return all of these subsets as your answer, right? Similarly, you can have one more case. For example, in my test case number 2, I have an array that just has a single element, right? It does not have any duplicates. So this answer will still remain the same. You will have an empty set and one more subset with the element itself, right? So now that you have understood the problem statement and you want to give it one more shot, feel free to try it out. Otherwise, let us see where are all these duplicates coming from and what can we do about it? To understand where are the duplicates coming from, let us try to attack this problem in the same way that we approached the original problem subsets. Once again, if you have not solved that problem first, do check that out first. So right now, I have this array with me, right? And to just see the difference, I am highlighting the second number 2 in a different color, right? So you will know how duplicates are being created, right? So how do we attack the problem? We start off with the first element, right? And then either we choose to keep this element or we choose to not keep the element, correct? This will give me two subsets. So I get one of my subsets as one and the other subset could be empty, right? So far so good. In the next step, I am gonna decide whether I want to keep the next element or I do not want to keep the next element. So this will again give me two cases each for each of the subset, right? Either I keep the element 2 or I do not keep the element 2. Either I keep the element 2 or I will not keep the element 2, right? And this will give me new subsets. So I get 1, 2 and over here I just get a 1. Over here I get the element 2 and once again I get a empty subset over here, right? So far this problem is the same, right? Now comes the interesting part. I have another 2 over here and that is a duplicate, right? So this time I have to decide if I want to keep this 2 or not. So when I come to this decision, each of the subset will give me two possibilities, right? Either I keep this new 2 or I do not keep it. Either I keep this 2 
or I am not keeping it. Right? Now, let us try to see how our new subsets look like. When I look at these subset, what do I get? I get 1, 2 and then the new 2, right? Similarly, I get 1, 2 in my second array. In my third subset, I get 1 from the original and I get the new 2. Similarly, I get 1 over here. In the next subset, I get an original 2 and then I get the duplicate 2. Going forward, I get the original 2 in here. Now I get the duplicate 2 and then once again I will get an empty set in the end. Right? Now just try to look at all of these subsets that you just got. These are all the possible subsets. Right? But if you notice closely, you will find some duplicates over here. You can see that this 2 and this 2 is a duplicate set. Right? And similarly, you have one duplicate 1 comma 2 over here and you have one duplicate 1 comma 2 over here so although these sets are derived from different tools this is a different two and this is a different two right but the subsets that you get the elements are same so all you need to do is whenever you are creating these subsets you just need to make sure that this subset that you are creating in the final step it already does not exist in the subsets that you have created. So one other approach could be that you find out all of these possible subsets and then remove all the duplicates at the end. It's one and the same thing. So you see how this problem is very similar to the original problem. Let us also quickly do a dry run of the code and see how all of this actually works. Let's try doing dry run of the code. And I have this sample array with me. This sample array is passed in as an input parameter to the function subsets with dupe, right? Oh, and by the way, the complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. So, starting off with a dry run, the first step that we do is we create a result list. So, this result list will contain all of the unique subsets. Right now, I have this test case, right? 2, 1, 2. One important thing to notice over here is that our test case could also be 2, 2, 1 and it could also have been 1, 2, 2, right? And if you look closely, all of these are same, right? Only the ordering of these elements is different, correct? So what we do is to make our life easier and to make sure that we're removing all the duplicates effectively, first of all, what we're going to do is we are going to sort our array and as soon as you sort this array all of these arrays will translate into a simple case and this will be our case that we have to work with right so now that we have this array what we're gonna do is we are gonna start backtracking and to start our backtrack what we're gonna do we will pass in this result list we will start off with an empty array so this is my empty array that I'm starting with and I will pass in the entire array so that I can work with it and this is my starting position. This is exactly same as the original problem subsets, right? So once all of this backtracking is complete, I will return my result list. Let us see now how this backtrack function looks like. If you notice, this method backtrack is exactly similar to the one that we had in our original problem subsets, right? What were we doing? As soon as we entered the method, we were adding this temporary set to our results, right? So what will this do is, it will take this empty set and it will add it to my results list, right? So far it is the same, correct? Next, what you're gonna do is, you will start a for loop and then you will decide for each number whether you want to include that number or you don't want to include that number. And every time you include the number, you will backtrack and then try a different case when you're not including the number, right? So this will generate the exactly same state space diagram. So you might ask, okay, this is gonna exactly generate these cases one and then two and then one comma two. So what is the difference? If you remember, when we were including all of our subsets, we were just making sure that we are not including the same subsets, correct? So that means we can just add a simple condition to our code and that condition would be 
if the set is already present in my result set, I do not want to add it again. And what I'm going to do is I will just return. So this will not add a duplicate set to my result list. And that's it. When this method will end, your result list will have all of the unique subsets. And since we are not doing anything different, we are just adding an if condition, right? So the time complexity and the space complexity of this solution is also the same as the original problem. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see a problem that is derived from some another problem, just focus on the deviation. You just need to handle that special case which the new problem is trying to address. This way, you will save a lot of time and you're not reinventing the wheel again. Even if you're interviewing, your interviewer will appreciate this approach very much because you are being time efficient on your own, right? What other problems did you see where a certain problem was derived from some another problem? How was that different? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this problem is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. You can find the link in the description below. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya!